Captain, we are being hailed. This is Captain Jean-Luc Picard of the USS Enterprise. Enterprise. But what could it be? Unknown, sir. Perhaps it is scanning. 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 Star Trek and shit. You know, it's like it's like a show. <laughs> <laughs> Where they trekking through the stars, motherfucker. Where they like, trekking through the stars. Through the fucking stars, bro. <laughs> hey, what sounds what sounds better? Watch this. Um the quick brown fox jumps over however the fuck this goes. The quick brown fox jumps over that blah, 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 blah. Which one sounded better? Uh they both sounded the same. Okay. I took the little the little fucking mic cover foam thing off. Oh, well, the, it's all it's all ripped up. <laughs> Jesus, kinda. It got caught under a chair when I was moving the room around. It's it only really. I mean, it helps only when you have if you have a fan on. It just keeps the. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh baby. Oh man. All right, welcome everybody to the Away Team, a podcast that has nothing but love for Star Trek, but aren't too caught up to not have fun with it. I'm Stephen Vargas. I'm Adam Riley. What's good with it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, uh, uh, this, this was actually something that was kind of cool. So, um, we were taught, um, oh no, it wasn't this one. It was another. Um, so... Actually, two things. Uh, first thing I want to say is, it, um, starting next week, we're going to be switching. We're switching hosting companies, and we're going to be our. We're, we're no longer going to be at the lazygeeks.home.blog. The lazygeeks.com will be our new home. Uh, it's it's up now as of this at the as of this recording, which is Sunday. So this goes up at the end of the week. It should actually be running by this point. Is, is my hope, but it'll definitely be running by at least Monday. But if you're right. listening to the show and you go to lazygeeks.com, you're going to see one of two po- <laughs> one of two things happen in there. One, you're going to actually see content on there. Or two, you're going to see a splash page that says uh, we're under construction. So that's the way it is right now. Uh, but by uh, by Friday, I, I expect to, we should, uh, if not by Friday, or at least on Friday, we should actually be fully uh, thelazygeeks.com again, which was our original domain name. Um but when we went to a private hosting company, uh, we were the one reason why I didn't want to map our domain to that is because I didn't really want to stay there. And if I had done that, we were going to be locked there for a year. And I really didn't want to do that. Fuck that. Exactly. Because we all about that life. <laughs> That's right. So, uh, so, yeah. So we'll be going there. So we'll have a totally new email, a total new email, which is going to be a generic email. Um, basically a catch-all for all our shows and they're gonna all come to to that one email instead of having you know 80 different ones so uh so that's that's a bit of news so that's gonna be cool coming out another thing is is over last week you know it was uh may the fourth day and um i i saw this one because this was actually kind of funny and it would just happen to be on my uh on my twitter feed and it was tweeted out by kirk r thatcher who was actually one of the writers of Star Trek Four, and he tweeted out, "This May the Fourth, I am uh, revealing a Star Wars Easter egg that I wrote into Star Trek Four that no one has ever caught, and it's the Matron of Vulcan philosophy that I created for this was named T Plane Hoth, or mildly unscrambled Planet Hoth. Hashtag unite both fandoms. So." Uh, you know, may the force be with you and live long and prosper. This is fucking heresy, <laughs> right? And I was playing. <laughs> and I was like, oh shit, I remember that. You know, it was like T Plan Hoth, you know, matron of Vulcan philosophy. And then it was like, yeah, he just unscrambled it. It's Planet Hoth. <laughs> was, that's pretty cool. I was like, that's cool. I like that shit. Uh, so that was, uh, that was kind of cool. Um, but uh, one big news this week that's if you play Star Trek Online. And I've been wanting to get back into it because, well, one, I want to get back into it because I just, it, I haven't played it in a long time. It'd be kind of cool to play it again. But two, we wanted to try something new with the YouTube versions of these podcasts. And that's one of the ones I'm, I'm looking at. So 
it should be interesting. Uh, but this comes from Eurogamer. And it's the year of the Klingon in Star Trek Online. And to celebrate, developer Arc Games has revealed details on a major multi-part 2411 focus Klingon storyline. Over the rest of 2020 and part of 2021, we are going to be put a major multi-part 2411 fo focus Klingon storyline, which was already used. Oh, my God. I hate when they do that. Uh, reads the recent update on the game's official uh, website. Thanks. Uh, quote, we can't. We can't release the details of what this is just yet, although it's a fair bet that Ula and her time-traveling cohorts are involved. But as part of, the, of this long-planned face-of-the-game-changing story, we're taking a little time to focus on our more honorable allies. We love our Klingon content. Who, does, um, who doesn't love a story that involves descending into Grethor and fighting a god? But... A lot, of, a lot of it is old. That doesn't contain the technical improvements we've made, over the, um, made to the game over the years, the developer added. So we're spending time and resources to give these pieces of content visual and game and gameplay play, uh, facelifts. Over the next 12 months, maybe more, you'll see new Klingon character models for some of our classic characters like Jamok, uh, Jumpok, Updates, uh, updates, skins for classic Klingon ships like the Bird of Prey, new environments and cutscenes to refresh this, to refresh this old but beloved content. The celebration kicks off with uh, hashtag Stovercore Saturdays, which uh -huh. which sees the devs debut a new piece of updated Klingon content on their Twitter and Facebook pages, including peeks at ships, environments, teasing quote, "You'll never know what it is until you see it." End quote. So there is also there will also be artist streams so fans can watch some of the game artists show off their work as they ha as they make it a 10 forward weekly interviews with uh, which will bring colleagues from different teams, environment, content, cutscenes and more in for interviews for weekly community stream on every Wednesday. Star Trek Online is free to play and out on PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. It's a good game. Yeah, I haven't played it in a while though. But it should be fun. I mean, I was like, going, "Oh, that's kind of cool." So, because I know they usually every year they always have some type of big event. Yeah. So it's kind of cool that they're gonna. I like how they break up their main storyline. It's broken into episodes. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, and at the end of every episode is dun dun dun, dun dun dun. <laughs> yeah, every every fucking episode's a cliffhanger because it's a game, so you have to keep going. <laughs> it's only at the end of the season when you're like, "Oh, that was cool." <laughs> Oh, man. All right. So this week's episode, it's kind of I've been noticing it's kind of funny. Like we had like the big kind of, you know, really kind of like, oh, cool startup with uh, Broken Bow. And then after that, the episodes have been kind of mild. Like, yeah. You know, we had like a big splash and then it's like, OK, now we're kind of just coasting along a little bit. So last week we had this is like trip trip focused like two weeks in a row because we what had the shit well yeah i mean i know that but shit. like he had, it was tripping to paul last week and then the week before that we had hoshi so yeah we did <laughs> <laughs> wow sorry i apologize uh, it's disrespectful really <laughs> but not not accurate <laughs> <laughs> all right so this episode is called unexpected and to be honest, by the title, I was a bit unexpected. I was a bit uh, surprised by what was going on. I definitely do not remember, did not remember this episode. Um, all right, so we start off in the episode with, um, <laughs> and who doesn't? Archer taking a shower. That's right. I mean, you know, I mean, they just could literally have the whole show that, and you know, people would still tune in. <laughs> <laughs> Scott Bakula is a pole. Okay. <laughs> uh, so you see, so Archer is basically he's taking a shower, and then also of, one one thing though, they're actually using water. Yeah, I yeah, because didn't they have sonic showers? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what they had in Next Generation. So. Yeah, so they're actually using water, and uh, 
Nice shower head too. Is that that waterfall kind of shower? Yeah, that's head. a high classy one. Yeah, you know? you know. Well, you know, I mean, you know, it's like going. Oh, this is the captain's room. Oh, okay, we gotta. Yeah, that's we, only in the captain. Yeah, exactly. Okay. You get the you get the bunk ass apartment <laughs> shower head <laughs> with that one with that one stream that comes out that that will literally pierce your skin. Like, right, <laughs> and the rest of it doesn't even hit you because I'm right. so it just I know it drops that, but you have the one that like you have to kind of dodge like phaser fire. You know? I mean, you know how you fix that. Mm. You so you let it soak in uh, CLR, mm-hmm. and then it, that's lime built. And, the, and I'm just saying. And then it'll and then once you turn it on the the rest of the water still comes out a little <laughs> shitty, and that one will literally cut you like right. like, <laughs> like a fucking laser beam, bro. <laughs> it'll, it'll cut you like you're getting mugged in like an alleyway <laughs> in New York City. <laughs> uh, so as archers take a shower. Um, well, you know, they had to make up for it because, you know, the whole with T'Pol and that, you know, a very unnecessary decamp, decamp, decontamination. How dare you? That was <laughs> integral to the plot. <laughs> yeah, all the close-ups of the hands rubbing off. Jesus. <laughs> it, that was so... Who chose to do that? Who got fired that day? That's what I want to know. Like, <laughs> that was filmed and was, someone watched it and said, fire this piece of shit. Was, Whoever fucking put this on here. <laughs> it was the director of photography. Like, it was his first day. Like, his first job was, like, running porn. <laughs> and then, like, right. you know, so it's like, it's, what it was. it's like second unit is like, oh, yeah, just get some close ups of, of, of them decontamination. Okay, just we rubber see, slow right there. <laughs> we see your last employer was Brazzers. <laughs> 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 I mean, it was ex- it was expert camera work. I'm not, I mean, you know, he definitely worked for Vivid. So he worked for Vivid. It's really what it was. yeah, it was high end. Yeah, because you know? yeah, it's the high end one. So you're like, oh, okay, so you worked for Vivid. <laughs> like, <laughs> he probably just had a crush on her as I would do all these zoom in shots. It's like, wait, wait, eat. wait, wait. Her nipples, her nipples aren't quite. Can can we make it a little colder in here? Because we need. Can the- we get the ice cubes in here, please? <laughs> make these. <laughs> it was ridi- It was just over the top, right. and they they were doing it a little bit with trip too. But I mean, obviously, sex sells, and right. the girls aren't. Most p- people watching Star Trek are dudes right. usually. <laughs> and you're like, oh, yeah, you know, it's like, oh yeah, let's get the sh- the angle to light this way. Okay, good. Now we can definitely clearly see your nipples in this one. So oh, let's, let's go with that. This is very important to the plot. <laughs> this is canon. <laughs> it's like Jesus, you about to shoot my canon? But it was good. Yeah, this is all going to be part of can. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my <It's> God. Appropriate. <laughs> um, so, uh, so basically, the scene is just Archer taking a slow shower. No, just kidding. Uh, uh, suddenly, out of nowhere, like, they have a, uh, the gravity, uh, internal gravity goes on the kaputs. And he starts floating up in the air. And then you get to see all the money that they spent on CG creating computer generation computer generated water molecules floating around and uh he contacts the bridge and uh malcolm is saying that yeah they're having problems and you know trips trying to put it together and he goes it should come back on any minute and then next thing you know he the gravity comes back and he fucking hits hard on the shower um when he hit when he when he fell to the bottom of the shower and you see it right there i was like oh god that's gonna hurt I don't care who you are. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, I was surprised that his dick wasn't holding him suspended in in air. I so. mean, I thought it was large enough to have its own gravitation force. Okay. <laughs> uh, but he did fall like a motherfucker. Like, I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> it's, it's, it always hurts my feelings to watch someone fall hard. Yeah. You're just like, oh, God. Like, you just feel it. <laughs> Like, you know, that was probably made out of neoprene to look like tile, but oh man. But that was a nice shower, though. Like, he had a nice ass shower. Really was nice. Like, like it, it, was, it was high end. And it was a sexy shower, too. Right. It was, you know. it was, Archer hasn't spent a lot of lonely nights kind of shower, is right. what we're trying to say. <laughs> he was probably like, yeah, I don't like the one here. Can we just bring in the one I have from home and just install right. it on the Enterprise? <laughs> For this one scene. Right. You know. I don't use peasant showers, okay? With each leap, he wanted to find a shower he could call home. (laughs) Quantum Uh, Leap is a fucking bomb-ass show, dude. I love that show. That show's great. Uh, So, um, 
malfunctions continued uh, to have effect on multiple systems. And uh, during uh, during a buffet, Flox was <laughs> Flox and DePaul had this really interesting conversation about how she won't eat any of the human food anymore or won't try any more human food since it tends to disagree with her system. <laughs> <laughs> and uh and it was funny too cuz like what he took was it was it like a blueberry pancake or something like that and he tried to shove it in her mouth. <laughs> yeah. I do <laughs> I like, was like so dude you were getting a little aggressive. <laughs> it's so funny because those two don't make any sense together but they're the only aliens on the ship. Oh yeah. So it makes sense that they have like little side conversations. Like, let's get away from these fucking apes. <laughs> <laughs> and like, Flox is like eating everything, like taking it everything. She's like, it doesn't agree with me. <laughs> like, leave me the fuck alone. I'm not gonna touch any of this shit. <laughs> it's like a vegan at a at a at a steakhouse. You know, it's like <laughs> she'll have to take space tums, motherfucker. <laughs> Space tums. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta stop by the Intergalactic Seven Eleven and pick up some. Uh, Please <laughs> pick up some uh, Zantac or whatever. <laughs> hey, gra- grab me a Cosmic Red Bull too. I'm a little tired. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> hey, they got that Intergalactic Slippery Machine working. All right, give me that uh, Vulcan Cherry. I like to have that. <laughs> right. <laughs> a Pluto dog instead of a, <laughs> a Pluto dog. It's got to be a Pluto dog. <laughs> Oh my god, dude! It's gonna go on forever. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's funny because she go, and then after they have like this weird side conversation, she decides that she's gonna get carbonated water from the uh, from the uh, from the wall unit, and I don't even want to venture a guess as to what the hell that was that came out of that. Uh, it, it was it was gross. First of all, it's weird that DePaul drinks sparkling water. Let's let's <laughs> let's put that there. Um, well, even also, Flock said, like, when she said carbonated water, is like, carbonated water, huh? Like, you know, like... Yeah, like, <laughs> it's... If you could pick something less exciting than water, <laughs> it's carbonated water. Because no one drinks seltzer water. Like, just by itself. Put some fucking gin in it, at least. Well, when you, yeah, when you do... Yeah, when anytime you have carbonated water, it's usually because you're mixing it with something. Right. Yeah. Not drink... Like, she's doing Earth wrong. She doesn't understand what she's <laughs> That's doing. That's why it doesn't yeah, agree it, with her. <laughs> It was like a black slime. It was like the worst coffee you've ever seen. It was just black <laughs> s- slime. It was gross. It was like, um, I think you confused it with the sanitation unit because that's what it looked like to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it was? It was it was her fucking lunch from the day before when she ate that human food. Oh, geez. That's what she was talking about. <laughs> this is getting gross. Yeah, now. I know. Now we're, now we're going into that. Um, so uh, Tuck receives that, it, you know, all these malfunctions – um, are happening all across the ship, and Archer uh, wanted an update, so he isolated it to the plasma exhaust, and he's but he needs more time. And just then, there's a small expo- explosion in the um, in the room, and that you know stops the conversation. And Archer and this and random dude number one grab uh, <laughs> grab some fire extinguishers and put it out. And uh, so, but they were traveling at warp this whole time, and then. You know, now Archer's like, yeah, I think you should, we should take it out of warp, you know, be like safe so we don't blow up and spread ourselves yeah. across, you know, <laughs> billions of, of uh, kilometers. And uh, so he finally um, tells the bridge that they should go back down to Impulse. Now, quickly, um, uh, was it, who was, I'm trying to remember who it was. They don't really say in memory alpha but i'm thinking was it arch no it wasn't arch was it tucker that figured it out or was it because they said they wanted they uh it was um it was um malcolm oh oh it was yeah he goes i think it was malcolm because they said it was discovered that the malfunctions were caused by a ship that was uh traveling in their plasma exhaust because they looked at the uh the plasma readings and it was just like creating some weird kind of thing and they shot um, something into the uh, plasma crowd, which kind of detected a ship was, you know, piggybacking in there. You know, it's like that dude that's siphoning. It's like that. It's like when you have the internet and you have that one dude that's just like kind of siphoning. You're like, why is my internet internet speed so low? And they're the ones that are like, you know, download movies and shit. Well, not downloading movies, but they're like the ones playing Modern Warfare. Yeah, and, and like cranked all the way up. You know, on top settings and shit. <laughs> Like bitches, like <laughs> I said, you can use the Wi-Fi. But you out here playing games, like it's ridiculous. <laughs> but you got it. You got a big ups to to uh, Archer though, 
because he didn't even get angry. He was he was more like a sympathetic parent. Like he's <laughs> like, "Do you need any help? Is yeah. everything okay?" Yeah, he's like, "Is is everything okay?" You like, please be sure that you need to stop what the fuck you're doing. But is everything okay? <laughs> yeah. All right. You, is everything okay? Are, are are you guys okay? Do you need any help? Because you're about to get my foot up your ass. But right. I need to you're know. You're about to get these fucking hands. <laughs> you're about to so. get. You're about to get Big Dick Archer to come That's after you. Right. So you know we need to know. I mean, I thought that was the only kind of Archer you get. Well, fucker, okay. <laughs> well, you know, because Big Dick Archer could scare some people. Yeah, you know, that's true. he's yeah. got to tone it down. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, they realize, so what happens is, is that, uh, an alien ship was cloaked and take, re- taking in the plasma exhaust and to replenish is terraphasic coils. So, because the engines were malfunctioning. So the aliens, you know, apologized and didn't want, you know, big, big Archer coming after them. Yeah. So Archer was like, offered to help and sends <laughs> sends trip <laughs> um over to the uh over to the alien ship to assist with repairs trip act like a bitch this whole fucking <laughs> he, it's funny because like two episodes he's like let me go captain let me go let's go let's go let me go over there now this was like well you know i mean uh i could go over there and help him out but you know well i mean the last time he went somewhere he almost fucking killed the paul <laughs> so you know <laughs> because he didn't follow the rules and yeah, again, again, you have him not following the rules, you know, early on. He never does. And you had, uh, you know, he was, uh, dude, he was getting inoculated. Like he was going out to like some third world country. Yeah. Fox. What was it? I forget. I was watching the episode today and then I couldn't remember why something about the ship's environment, but it doesn't, I can't remember what it was. Yeah. It was something that the, uh, that, like uh, there was something, yeah. There's something about the environment that affected humans, which is why he had to go through like s- how many hours of like decontamination and shit. Three hours. Three hours. Three hour decompression. He calls Archer a few times. He kept calling Archer like a bitch. <laughs> he was. He was, been here forever. He, he was like that teenage kid, you know. That's like yeah. you know. That's like calling you every five minutes. You know. You like uh, the the. I put the thing in the microwave. How long do I leave it for? It's like you leave it for three minutes. It's beeping now. It's beeping now. What do I do? What do I do? You, you open the fucking door and take the food out. And it's hot. How am I going to get the food out of there? It's like, oh my God, dude. <laughs> calm the fuck down. It's like, can you calm the fuck down? <laughs> you used the microwave before. Stop it. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm drinking bleach now. <laughs> you need to calm the fuck down is what you need Aww. to do. <laughs> wait, wait, what? I'm eating fucking Tide Pods, man. <laughs> Everything's upside down. <laughs> They're calling me. I was me like, down. you know what? I'm just gonna call this a loss. I don't, I don't know what the fuck you're doing. <laughs> and then it's like you see Archer going, um, to Paul, notify Starfleet that we lost a uh, trip, <laughs> and we're, we need a new engineer, and we're going back to Earth. <laughs> Leave him there. <laughs> <laughs> and when it says why death by fucking dumb, it's death by dumb, death by dumb, <laughs> death by dumb. <laughs> <laughs> we lost the death by dumb. <laughs> oh, it was it was a DBD? Yeah, it was a DBD. Death by DVD. dumb. <laughs> oh man. So uh uh Trap Merriweather take um takes him over to uh on the on uh, uh one of the little pods over to the ship and uh Tucker climbs up this ladder into a small chamber and the room starts filling with gas. And it starts to burn his lungs, and uh, so it. Oh well, yeah, because it was it was getting him accustomed to their atmosphere. That's right, because remember he was it was filling up with gas, and he was just mm-hmm. like, huh, huh, huh. and it's like He's being such a bitch, dude. <laughs> it was getting on my nerves, and it was like it, it's like what is it? it? It burns, it burns. It's like yeah. Well, so did that hooker you had on Ord Mandel. That that, that, that burn. I'll tell you. I'm going to tell you like this. The Forge wouldn't have acted like that. Oh, fuck no. Scotty wouldn't have acted like that. Mm-mm. Man the fuck up. Exactly. Okay? Bellana, Bellana probably would have acted like that. Bellana would have acted. Because like she's kind of a, yeah. Uh, Bellana just gets angry for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was episodes of Voyager. It was like, why is she mad? <laughs> like, now I get it that she has a temper, but there's no reason now. Like, yeah. calm down. But it's it's funny, too, because she was like half Klingon, half, like half Klingon, half human. Right. And she got mad so much. And I was like, Worf never got that mad. 
Do you know why? Because the half human added whiny to it. Oh, right. That's right. It added that <laughs> nagging whine thing. So it, it was a temper of that could instill violence and also annoyed by every fucking thing every, everybody does. So it was like this toxic fucking mix. Dude. It was Klingon and e-girl. <laughs> it's what it was. She was mad because they weren't fucking paying her OnlyFans. <laughs> Ridiculous. And the only one that was paint was uh was uh, Paris, so that pissed her off. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Paris is trying to get in. Though. I mean, yeah. let's keep it real. He was know? a he was a sim. <laughs> he a hundred percent, hundred percent. Oh my god. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so uh, Tucker, so uh, trip. Yeah, go um, is getting adjusted to in their environment, and during the three hour pr- uh, process, he calls Archer all the damn time. He's like, it was like that, you know that uh, that person you go out with on a date once, and then they're, you know, like, why don't you text me back? Why don't you text me back? I texted you like two minutes ago. Why don't you text me back? You left yeah. me. You left, and it's like, yeah, did you want you change your phone number? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like you, you expect Archer to be like, new phone, who this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <New> phone with <laughs> it. Can you can you imagine like uh, Hoshi be like, oh my god, he's calling again. New phone, who this? <laughs> I would love that shit, that dude. Would be awesome. Uh, so he finally gets out of decompression, and they're the the aliens are just kind of like, uh, what were they called? Zerillions. Yeah, yeah it's really and they were they were telling him like, "Oh, okay, dude, you just came out of this. How about you go chill? How about you lie down for a little bit?" And of course, being like arrogant as fuck, like he wanting to get out, he's like, "No, let's just do this, and and I'll get out of here," you know. And yeah, they're like, "You you should chill, dude." And he's like, "No, no, no, I got this." You know? It just came it came off as just being overly annoying. Like yeah. it's like, dude, can you knock the fuck off? Yeah. It was it was funny because I was thinking I was kind of like it just seemed like a little bit of like machismo like no 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 I'm all right I'm all right after three hours of whining I'm all right I'm all right I got this I got this yeah and then he goes and and he tries to start helping them but he starts feeling nauseous and and sick and everybody's like I told you to fucking chill out like to relax and then Archer annoyed as fuck like he's getting like. Dude, they said re- it's like you expected to hear uh you expected to hear Archer to be like, "Oh my god." <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. He almost did. Like he was being super patient. I think to Paul was losing it. Cuz she cuz she was the one passing she, she the was, messages to She him. was definitely the "Oh my god, this special needs motherfucker." <laughs> like, <laughs> like <laughs> trips on the line again <laughs> because he's being a bitch. And I'm I'm I if I ever decide to sleep with this man, please hit me. <laughs> you know what's funny is that, you know, on the, that Nike finesse video, like the teller would be like the, the the voice on the on the machine would be to Paul and Archer would be the, <laughs> the voice of the guy like, hey, this special needs motherfucker over here wants to know why he can't come back. What is he dumb? You want me to ask him? <laughs> yeah. Hey, are you dumb? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, oh, my. You got to do that. Oh my god, that lip smack! <laughs> right. Uh, so he find um, Archer's just like take a nap, fuck off, <laughs> and, <laughs> and so he goes. To, he ends up going to sleep, wakes up, and uh, you know a uh, the Zerillion engineer, you know comes uh, Aline Aline or some Aline. Uh, I can't remember. Yeah, and uh, she helps uh that's what it looks like. It's like Achlan, Achlan, I think Achlan, uh, like, yeah, to uh, helps him recuperate. Like he wakes up and he's kind of like, all right. Like it's funny too, because like when he woke up, he looked like he just like smoked an amazing bowl. Like that look of yeah, reaction, just, uh, it, right. like that re- a- the reaction of how relaxed and how he's like, a, yeah, was good with it. Was <laughs> like what the fuck? <laughs> what it. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> what it looked like in this month. <laughs> and I, I want to know what was in those cubes. Like she said it was water, but like I don't know. Because I didn't like how she's like, trust me. Nah. nah. Like, 
when a random chick's like, trust me, you don't do that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you run. In fact, yeah. you run. Um, and then she starts doing that little, like, uh, that little, like, Emperor Palpatine, like, force lightning kind of thing when she's giving him arm. And she's like, how does it feel? And he's like, and this suddenly he's like, going, uh, I don't, I, I don't not like it. And is it weird that I'm aroused right now? Like, <laughs> I don't not like it. <laughs> it's true. But he just, he had that, just that look of like, I'm about to get some alien pussy right now. Like, that's just right. kind of that. That's really the reason he's come out into space. So he was ready, bro. <laughs> he was like, I've had every chick on Earth. It's like, and Mars. <laughs> you know, right. it's like. What, and what the a, moon. And the moon. And it's like, what else we got? <laughs> we can't, what else is out there? <laughs> <laughs> what else we got? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, after, after you know, getting that little, uh, that little electrolyte. Oh, that's what I called it. I called it electrolytes. <laughs> when he yeah. was getting... <laughs> it looks like those fucking cubes, like the Gatorade fucking cubes yeah. you can get. <laughs> so... After some time, he's in a fucking great ass mood, and he gets the engines all working and going. He's like, "Let me fix some fucking engines, man." Yeah, yeah he's like, "This is this is awesome, man." <laughs> so, um, it's it, everything's all cool and stuff like that, and he's just like, "All right, it's gonna take a couple hours for them to charge up." So they have a break, and uh, and so <laughs> this alien chick who's looking at looking at trip like. I got to get some human meat. Like she, she just, she had that. Like, she's like, you know, come with me. You know, I want to show you something. And I'm like, going, and then like trip walks with her all kind of like with a smile on his face. And he's like, going, I'm going to get laid. <laughs> just what yeah. I just thought in my head. Like he looked goofy. I'm this <laughs> motherfucker. Dude. And so she bring, basically gives him the, um, takes him to a hollow deck. Right. And, uh, you know, we kind of get there. He gets his first experience of it and stuff like that. And, um, you know, like her planet and stuff like that. And then they bring him on a boat and then they do this thing with the, <laughs> then they do this quote unquote game with like a bunch of like pebbles. And I don't understand how the game works because she's like, it's a game. And then they read each other's thoughts. I'm like, how, what's the game aspect of this? Like, yeah, like, honestly, if it was me, I would have been like. Okay, this is cool and all, but how do I win this game? Right. <laughs> like, what, what's the end goal here? <laughs> See which one of us gets pregnant first. Okay, this will be you. <laughs> oh, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I never, I never. If anyone comes up, hey, you want to play a game? You need to explain the entire game. To <laughs> right, me exactly. Agree. What's the point like, of the game? What do we need to do here? Right. <laughs> like, How are you gonna try to fuck me in this game? Okay. Any way I can. <laughs> like, oh, wait, what? I don't wanna play. I know. I don't wanna play no more. <laughs> What's the safe word? That's what I need to know. <laughs> Yeah, the safe word. <laughs> What's the safe word for this fucking game? Oh shit. Um so yeah, so the it enables them to reach a, a, each other's minds and then they end up having to go back because the the coils have come back online. So Trip heads back to the Enterprise, and he's he's all sorts of like <laughs> he's had that like I just got laid look on his face, like he like it was like great sex kind of face. <laughs> and um, so the uh, Zerillion ship leaves, and Tucker, you know, starts like not feeling well. Or ha- or something. Oh no! He discovers a uh, weird growth on his wrist, and uh, so he goes to uh, to Doctor Flox, and like <laughs> Trip thinks it's an allergic reaction. I was like, that's that's a little weird for allergic reaction. Like, what exactly are you allergic that's a, to? That's that cat that like when you're sick and you know you're sick, but then he goes. Oh, it's allergies, bro. Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> he knows something's wrong. It's like you're disintegrating <laughs> in front of me. It's not allergies. Right. And then uh, the Flox uh, does some tests and realizes it's a nipple. And he says, uh, you know, and it's because he scanned him and he realizes that Trip is pregnant. So... <laughs> <laughs> 
So it's basically, oh, what was that Arnold Schwarzenegger movie uh, where he was pregnant? Oh, uh, oh God. I, oh, fuck. I can't remember that name. Junior, bro. Junior. Was it Junior? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that movie was hilarious. <laughs> so Trip goes through several scans and Archer and T'Pol are in the sick, are in sick bay. Uh, <laughs> this is the best part learning of the situation. Episode. So, um, Phlox tells him that no genetic material was taken from the male involved, so therefore Trip is serving as the host of the embryo. So, uh, however, it's integrated into his uh, pericardium. Pericardium. So uh, it was under his ribs, right? So <laughs> Flux is really just like I can't remove it without any more information. So <laughs> Trip is asked some <laughs> rather uncomfortable questions by Ar- Archer and Paul about his stay on board the ship. And uh, uh, it's those questions a doctor asks a teenage: Are you sexually active? Right. What? No. 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 I've never even seen a man's penis. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> um, and so, uh, <laughs> so Flux says that there must be some some lengthy physical contact to transfer the genetic the material. The doctor, first of all, doctor straight snitch. The do- <laughs> doctor is in the back and just gets any time Trip says nothing half. He's like. No, something happened. Yeah, exactly. Bro. Like, I'm like, fucking doctor ain't got your back, bro. <laughs> and uh, uh, Trip is emphatic that he was a perfect gentleman the whole time. Yeah, well, listen. And, uh, I've been a perfect gentleman before, too, and I got a lot of kids. <laughs> you know? And to Paul, oh, my God. I, her first thing was, you were there for three days. You couldn't. Paul was so fucking disappointed, <laughs> I that's what it was. It wasn't like a jealousy. It was a disappointed a disappointed tone. Like when you get from your parent, you know, that that makes it sting even more. It it's was, like I'm not mad at you. I'm just disappointed. And you know what? I'm kind of thinking about it. So you remember the first episode and Trip yelled at that alien chick who was weaning her kid off of um, Oh, right, right, right. whatever they were breathing. And um to Paul had to check him. And then they've been doing pretty good the next couple episodes. <laughs> and then this just like brought back that. And she's like, still a primitive piece of shit. I swear <laughs> to God. Yeah. She was like, you know, it's like I was a perfect gentleman. Obviously, you have a different definition of gentleman. <laughs> yeah. And like this this banter going on between Trip and, and T'Pol and Archer is like covering his mouth because he's starting to laugh. Because like <laughs> you got pregnant by an alien. <laughs> it's so great. <laughs> And every time he had to like say he was innocent, to Paul had a fucking line for him. Like, <laughs> like you could almost expect to be like, mm-hmm. like that's yeah. that's what you. I'm mean. sure you were. Uh, yeah. He just wanted her to go <laughs> and just look away. Yeah. Well, like, we, whatever, well, we just bitch. played this pebble game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I bet, bet you played. Was... I bet she played with your pebbles and fucking <laughs> motherfucker. The best. The best line was the first thing in dipl- of the first thing a diplomat learns is to keep his fingers out of where they don't belong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, (laughs) (laughs) that was a hundred percent sexual. I was like, I was like, yeah, but you got to kind of know, you know, it's, it's third base, you know, (laughs) sometimes you got to feel out the situation. You feel me. He should have played it up, dude. That's what I would have did. Listen, (laughs) she was practically begging for it. What you want from me? All right. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I, I knew I was there as a diplomat. So for me, I thought it would be rude right. if I if I didn't take part in this because, you know. I was trying to extend this olive branch, you feel me? <laughs> I was trying to this I was trying to extend this diplomatic uh <laughs> <laughs> I was a I was a del I was a what is it called? A a delegate. <laughs> so, you know, I needed to make my envoy, if you catch my meaning. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh so yeah so um it's funny too because now they have to try to find uh <laughs> the Zerillians. and so and archer looks like he's just la- having a good time with this because he's just trying not to laugh in, in trip's face so uh um, it's a couple moments in this episode that he's doing that 
Yeah. It's not just a scene. It's like anytime they start talking about it, he's like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, you know, keep it a secret. It's like just us in the room. And I was like, oh, there, he's dead. <laughs> he's all, sure thing. Yeah. <laughs> don't immediately. Hey, don't tell nobody. Yeah. You don't happen to trip. You it's first, between you he, and me. It's between you and me. And that's how it always happens too. You know yeah, that it was the you and me. Yeah, you know the, that person goes and tells somebody this is between you and me. And he's going around. The you know it plane. was the minute he stepped out the doorway. First crewman to walk by. Hey, 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 hey! Got to tell you this. <laughs> and I love the first. Per- oh wait, this is later on. I'll talk. I'll talk about this later. But so, uh, so funny, dude. So you know he's. So they need to find. You know they need to find him and find out what the fuck happened. So as they're tracking him, Trip ends up meeting up with Archer and um, uh, Phlox for dinner. Now, there's a it's a growth that's coming out of like the side of his ribs, so he can't wear his uniform. Oh, what the, oh no! Before that, he he starts freaking out because he goes up the little elevator to the second level of engineering, and then starts freaking out about. How unsafe that is. Well, well, somebody left their hands right there. Boop, they're gone. And then the he's yelling at some random crewman. The crewman's like, well, who would put their hands right there? Like, hey, but real talk, he was right. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was unsafe, bro. <laughs> who wouldn't put their hands on the railing to rest when they were going off the thing? <laughs> Stupid. But it was it was obviously trying to say that he's like maternal instincts yeah, he, are kicking in. Exactly. And then because women do do that. Like my wife, every time she got pregnant, she was like, we need to like baby proof the house. And so I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? You know, the house is a death trap, right? It's like survival of the fittest, man. If the kid can't survive the house, they can't survive outside. Exactly. OK, we're only we're only enabling them. Like, why are we That's why right. would we do that? <laughs> so uh, when he when he ends up having to wear a bigger shirt. And it's funny because like Trip's becoming ultra paranoid that people know what's going on. So he walks through the mess to get to the captain's dinner table and he looks and like people look at him and stuff like that. And he's starting to like, they know. They all know yeah. about me. <laughs> you guys told people, didn't you? <laughs> and he instantly thinks to Paul told. Yeah. And it's like out of all of them. Because well, where, where he comes anybody. from, Vulcans aren't the most trustworthy. Right, but DePaul doesn't speak to anyone. Right, she hates I I everyone. Think she only speaks to the senior officers. Only because, and that's and only because he has. Exactly, to. that's what I was gonna say. It's only because she has to speak to them. That's why she speaks to them at all. Yeah. <laughs> she's she's not a friend yet. Right, she just works there. <laughs> she's that she's that person at work that will only talk to you when they need to. But they, they otherwise they would wear their headphones and just stay in the corner of their yeah. office. And when you see them, when you see them, you say hey, good morning. They do that like pursed smile and just a nod. Like, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, it's like, oh, you all the way don't want to talk to me. <laughs> OK, Like I can read the room and you don't want to be here at all. <laughs> like that's <laughs> I'm picking up what you put down and I'm offended. All right. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, shit. So uh, they finally pick up the uh, the Z- uh, the Zerillion, uh ship, and it's doing it's hitchhiking um, on the a Klingon battle cruiser. <laughs> mm. So it's doing the same of thing. Of course, of course, it's doing the same thing it did with the Enterprise. Uh, so Archer decides that they need the Klingons' cooperation since they were not able to communicate with the Zerillians without alerting them. So that meant a difficult explanation of the situation, as the Klingon captain Varok. Uh, is irritated and he's straight up like immediately pissy. Like <laughs> he's irritated that he even has to acknowledge the Enterprise's presence. <laughs> exactly. Like, he's sort of this piece of shit talking to me. Yeah. I mean, he even fired on the ship without even answering their initial hail. Right. You know. And then finally, he answers and immediately starts preparing to. Once he finds out, Archer tells him about them, and once they discover him, they immediately want the ship captured and execute the crew. <laughs> it's also their ship is a Katanga class. Yeah. Oh, they call it a D seven, I think, or D six. Yeah. God, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so <laughs> um, Archer's like, whoa, 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 we we kind of we need them. We we kind of need them. But the guy doesn't give a shit what Archer needs. And then, he even says it. Yeah. He, like, I don't I don't care about your problems. Yeah. Exactly. Shit was so funny, and it's funny too because they hailed them 
and, and at first, and before they even spoke, they shot him fucking three times. Yeah, the Klingon said, "Pop, pop, pop." What's up? <laughs> yeah. It was like it was like gangster, like <laughs> yeah, know, like pop, pop, pop. What you want? He's, he's like, how do, he said, "What gives you the what? What do you think gives you the right to approach a Klingon warship?" I was like, <laughs> "Klingons are fucking assholes, bro." <laughs> right? <laughs> they were the bullies of the galaxy. <laughs> Uh, so, um, so it's funny too, cause to Paul ends up coming up and stepping up, uh, um, to Archer talking about how I'm um, basically referencing the first episode that with the experience with the cat, the Klingon chancellor and right. he honored and wisdom and stuff like that, heeding his request. And, um, the uh, Vark was like, fine. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got no choice. It's basically like, well, the manager told me to come here. It's like, fuck. One of my favorite lines, too, is when um, Trip was talking to uh, the captain of the Klingon ship. And he goes, he goes, unless you're unless you're scared to go over there. And he goes, I'm not afraid of anything but talk. And then fucking <laughs> Trip has that look on his face where he looks away. He's like, okay, motherfucker. Well, like, whatever, <laughs> Some, bro. Somebody's trying to flex a little <laughs> too hard here. <laughs> like, if you got to flex that hard, you obviously a bitch. <laughs> It'd be funny if you just push. He's like, listen, you look like a bitch from where I'm sitting. And I'm pregnant. You look like a bitch. Bro. Oh, you shut up, you, <laughs> you ludicrous looking motherfucker. <laughs> you ludicrous looking. <laughs> dude, I like how the Klingon captain had a hype man. That dude in the I back know. was just in the back. Like, like, like you expected him with like a tilted cap going, oh. He's like, what's up? What's good, motherfucker? It's just it was funny. Oh, dude. you know, my boy, my boy. If he's over there, he kicked the shit out of you, right? That's that's what's up, right? <laughs> I'm going to be real, though. It, Klingons are usually played, like the actors that play them, play them really well. Yeah, like the even that one. He's not, not even on the screen that long, and he has such a fucking presence. <laughs> <laughs> like you're like, oh shit. Well, you that ship has a presence. As soon as you saw yeah. it, you're like, oh fuck, this ain't gonna be good, bro. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I want to. I'm gonna check him in memory alpha. Maybe he did something else. So, uh, he basically. So, um, Archer also asks. To allow Tucker to come with them aboard the ship. And he says, like, fuck that. I ain't doing it until I know why. So Tucker, so Trip has to show him the uh, the uh, the growth on his body to his embarrassment. And it's funny, too, because, like, even the crew, like, they're leaning over their fucking desks. Like, what? Other consoles to see what the hell's going on. I mean, what the fuck? <laughs> even Malcolm was the funny one. He's leaning up. He's like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> He's really like, oh, shit. And the Klingons were all sorts of hilarious. <laughs> like they were, they just started laughing. They were like literally, they'd be like caps tilted to the side, rolling all over the floor. And he's like, "I was there to, you know, help them with their technology. Obviously, you did more than that." <laughs> oh, that's why I remember this dude, the dude who played um, Forok, mm-hmm. played Commander um, Kaibok in in DS Nine. Remember that episode where Worf. Um, he fought. He had just come to the station, I think, and there was this young Klingon with his homies acting. Oh up, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he yeah. beat him up, and he took the the blade from him. And his father came. He was the father. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He played a big role in DS9, yeah. bro. <laughs> and so, uh, so the alien, so the Klingons start clowning his ass for being over there. They're basically doing the same thing to Paul did. It was fucking hilarious. <laughs> so they're like, <laughs> obviously, you did more than that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was funny because they said um, we need to speak to them because there's a pregnancy involved, and this dude, ultra Chad Macho motherfucker, <laughs> he's he's like he'd be like more careful next. Basically saying wrap it up. Right. He says he says count. It, what did he say? Like count it as a loss and forget it happened <laughs> yeah. or something. Like that. I was like, damn. <laughs> so. uh um, but he convin- he he convinces the Klingons that you know they they might be interested in their holograph holograph technology. So he starts you know using like hey maybe they'll show you how to use it and you know you can you know. Fat- oh, and that's when he said because um, he said uh, he goes it's like you could 
it's you could it was like you could see Kronos is like you were there. Yeah. You know, unless you're afraid to go check it out. And that's the and the dude he the captain looked like he was softening up, like, Oh yeah, it sounds kinda interesting. As soon as he said afraid, he said, What the fuck you just said? <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you who's afraid, motherfucker. I ain't the and one fucking, pregnant. <laughs> and Archer glances at Trip like, Shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, aren't you like he, we're in enough trouble because of you? <laughs> keep in mind, this isn't Star Trek the next generation. Right. Okay. The Enterprise NX-1 would have got torn in half by that fucking Klingon oh, yeah. ship, dude. <laughs> it's uh, not a warship. The Enterprise is not a warship. No, no. It's a prototype base. It's an right. NX, you know? So on the Zerillion ship, the Klingons uh, get a uh, topographical uh, data of their world and look at the technology. And then they say that fucking line. I think I can see my house from here. <laughs> I was it like, had to been seen. I was like, really, had to have really, been guys, we have to go. No, that that made the whole episode worth it for me because that, that was gold. That was gold for you. <laughs> I was playing, so I was watching. I have multiple monitors. No big deal. Not a flex. I was watching <laughs> um, the episode on one monitor. I was playing World of Warcraft at the same time, and when I could see my house from here, I said, "What the fuck." <laughs> <laughs> so the Zerillians agree to uh, uh, share their technology, and then you know Trip finally is able to explain his situation and to the talks to the baby mama. Yeah, talks to the baby mama, and the baby mama's like, "It's mine. I didn't know it was possible. <laughs> like, yeah, you, but you wanted to find out. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like he listen. If, if there was even a remote chance, you, she basically raped him. Bro. Yeah, basically, and like. Uh, yeah, it's I mean, questionable. Yeah, I mean it's. I mean, hashtag me too. You know, like <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't. I don't know why, but it reminded me of the scene in Demolition Man where where Stallone fucks uh, Sandra Bullock over the fucking VR helmets. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he looked at that thing like I can't even enjoy this, bitch. I don't know what the fuck <laughs> this is. <laughs> oh man, so. uh <laughs> After an examination, they finally conclude that the embryo could be safely transferred to another host. And it's also revealed that the embryo, embryo is a girl and is healthy. Like, it's a girl? Like, of course, Trip has a girl. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, like a, typical, like a typical man, he leaves and we never hear from his baby ever again. <laughs> and like a typical bottle show, there is nothing left over that ever needs to have the show get pulled up again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, it's funny. So as you see that whole species, exactly, too. you know, and they were pretty dope. That it, it would, they were like, uh, um, they were chill. Like aside, they reminded aside, me of eels. Yeah, I mean, aside from the raping part, you know, they were seem pretty yeah, well, chill. You know, <laughs> they seem pretty chill. You don't know how you don't know how eels get down, right? <laughs> but it was interesting because they took great care to make them different. Like their food grew on the walls. Yeah, and they had grass on the like. It was just some wa- some wacky shit, dude. You know, and, and they had shit engines. Yeah. <laughs> they, <couldn't, laughs> they were the people that kept, you know, like revving their engine into the red. And then like, well, the red right. light came on. Yeah, but I thought it would get brighter as the worse it got. <laughs> you know? So as they depart. Like, who made the, who made the ship? Chevy? Like, like, God damn. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep it right. Oh, I see the Chevy. You see on the front of the ship a Chevy logo. <laughs> like, oh, well. I'm like, oh, there we go. That's why. See it right there. <laughs> Uh, Blazer four by four. <laughs> yup. <laughs> so Tapal tells a uh, trip that he may be pleased to know that after some research, she found that this is the first recorded incident of a human male becoming pregnant. Yay! And then tri- and then trips like, yeah, that's just how I want it to go down in history. Didn't they say it was it was also the first incident of a interspecies, um, interspecies pregnancy with a human? <laughs> yeah. Too. So hey man, he, he's in the Guinness Book of World Records for two things. I call it a fucking win. <laughs> okay, my dog is excited. You know, it's it's we out here. Okay. <laughs> well, we're, we're, uh, Flox told uh, Trip, I'm not sure if uh, I'm not sure if congratulations are in order, but you're pregnant. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh, oh, here's the here's the uh, three days. You were only there for three days, and you couldn't restrain yourself. I'm telling you, Captain, I was a complete gentleman the entire time. I imagine that's a question of how you define gentleman. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. 
<laughs> oh yeah, I'm the chief engineer. I spent years earning that position. I never had any intention of becoming a working mother. <laughs> that was one of the times when Archer almost lost it, bro. <laughs> and it makes that it makes it so much funnier because he never did lose it. Right. It was always right. Like, oh fuck. <laughs> excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> Postnatal responsibilities. You may be you may be putting those nipples to work before you know it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, what? Well, oh, yeah. It was. Uh, I consider myself a diplomat for the minute from the minute I set foot on that vessel. Well, there were those box of pebbles. <laughs> and one of the things a uh, diplomat learns is not stick his fingers where they don't belong. <laughs> uh, there was. Some... Oh, there was a deleted scene, bro. Oh, there was a deleted scene. It says um, the scene mostly takes place at the console and enterprises situation room and shows Tucker, who is not feeling very well, to Paul and Reed, discussing whether or not they are actually tracking the stealth alien vessel. Tucker attempts to dismiss himself only for DePaul to recommend a meal, revealing she has been told that Rigelian sausage, which has recently been prepared by the ship's chef, is notably succulent. I just want to hear DePaul say succulent. <laughs> I feel like that would be exciting. Um, Tucker replies that he plans to lie down for a while, but as he waits for the turbo lift door to open, Reed comes up with a faster way to detect the alien ship's plasma trail by modifying the Enterprise's UV sensors. He asks for the en- engineer's help to do so, but Tucker, about to vomit, rushes to it. So it's the morning sickness right. joke. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, you know. Well said, um, the Connor uh, Trinier found he had a lot to do in this Enterprise installment. Quote, and I really look at the episode and try to make it all make it my own. The actor stated because it was really it was really centered around Trip and that whole experience of winding up pregnant, and it was funny. And I even had some ideas and I threw it out that and they were like, "Yeah, that's great, that's great." So I think they were giving me enough rope to hang myself with, and I didn't. <laughs> oh look. This episode shows what Archib- Archib believes is the first interspecies pregnancy involving a human. However, it was it will later it will later turn out it is not even the first instance of first interspecies reproduction involving Tucker. <laughs> <laughs> um, the episode E two reveals that a half Vulcan son of an alternate version of him operates in the Delphic Expanse in North Star. Um, Enterprise will also uncover another earlier. Pre- pre- earlier precedent thing. yeah when they <laughs> it's getting late <laughs> when they witness descendants of humans and skagarians on the other hand to paul claim to paul's claim that it's the first recorded instance of a human male becoming pregnant remains unchallenged but i think arnold schwarzenegger had that so it's it's <laughs> like you know so so we have that <laughs> this this episode's actually kind of important this is the first known hostile encounter between a starfleet vessel and a klingon ship mm. Um, to Paul later brings up Tucker's dalliance. Del- dalliance. What is with these weird fucking words? I think Alpha's <laughs> trying, bro, with the female Zerillian engineer in Oasis, which causes him to angrily reply to to Paul, "We'll never let that go," <laughs> which shows that she's constantly talking that shit, bro. <laughs> it's fucking great. Oh. Uh. All right. Oh. Archer's known Trip for eight years. That was the last thing. I might as well throw that in there. Uh, so what are we looking for next week? <laughs> next <laughs> time on Star Trek Enterprise. Next time. Um, <clears throat> The teaser states, The crew of the Enterprise NX-01 is heading towards the planet Terra Nova to investigate what happened to the long-lost colony. Helmsman Ensign Travis Mayweather is the most excited to visit as he has been fascinated by the colony since his childhood. So I don't really remember this entire episode, but I, it was kind of like a, some, a long time ago, some people went to go colonize this planet and then they were never heard from again. And because we didn't, or we, <laughs> they didn't have a ship that went fast enough. They were kind of like, oh, well, that sucks. And then they just kind of went about their lives. So it shows you what what's going on with them. So, so. it's Roanoke? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. Or we'll aliens. See how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> it's America, baby. What's up? <laughs> so, right. thanks for joining us, guys and girls. You never know. 
If you would like to help the show, feel free to donate. You can donate through PayPal or our blog, thelazygeeks.com. If you can't help us out monetarily, that's fine. You can always review the show on any platform that you've downloaded it from, which is a great, great assistance. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Threw a little kiss on the end. <laughs> Uh, you can follow us on social media. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all under at the Lazy Geeks. Comments and suggestions or questions, you can email us at thewayteammail at gmail.com. And you also, if you want to, like I, we've said this before, if you want to hear some of our previous uh, episodes that are, are through our first incarnation, which was the first two seasons and a little bit of the third season of Star Trek The Next Generation, uh, you can go ahead and check those out on our YouTube channel. Also, be sure to check out the other shows on the Lazy Geeks Network. The Lazy Geeks drops every Monday, uh, while Steve's The Fine Line drops every Wednesday. All right, and that is it for us this week. So until next time, two to beam up. <laughs>